Hi, everybody. Welcome to our service for Monday, Thursday. Um, that might be a new word for you um, if you haven't done this before. Sometimes we call it Holy Thursday, and that's good, too. It's part of Holy Week. Um, Monday comes from the uh, Latin word, and I don't know Latin, but um, I've studied this enough to know that it comes from the word that means um, commandment um, or mandate. That helps us get it into the Monday um, frame of mind. So, um, so this is Monday Thursday. This will just be a short service, um, you, and I hope it's a little bit like what we normally do um, when we're in church. We usually have uh, dinner together um, with some bread and some soup. We kind of keep it simple, um, and then move from our dinner right into the service um, at the same tables where we have just eaten. Um, and that's a reminder that that's what happened with Jesus and his disciples. Um, this service is. Um, um, to remind us of that night um, that Jesus had the Last Supper with his disciples. So I'm going to be doing some readings um, and talking a little bit about that. Um, if you want to, um, I hope um, you can grab some communion elements. Um, it might be a piece of bread or some crackers. Um, it might be some juice or even a glass of water. It doesn't really matter much. Um, and have those ready. Um, and the other thing that Jesus did on this night um, when he had dinner with his disciples, that last dinner, was he washed their feet. Um, and that's also one of the things that we normally do at church on Monday, Thursday. Um, so grab um, a wet paper towel or a wet washcloth um, or a little, little bowl or pitcher of water um, and have those ready. Um, you might want to put out a candle or two um, and, and a cross, whatever it is that you might like for your little altar area. Um, and um, uh, get ready for um, our, um, our service. You can stop me if you need to go pick those things up. Um, but, um, uh, and then we'll be ready to go in just a moment. This was a real meal for Jesus, and it helps us to remember that it's okay to do that for our own um, service as well. So um, maybe play this as you're having supper or right after you have supper so that you can do the communion and the foot washing um, uh, within the context of the meal um, and being all together as a family if you have that opportunity. Hear these words that call us into worship. Come and remember the love of Jesus gathered at a table with his friends. Come to receive from Christ the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Come and receive the tender service that Christ offers to each of us. Come to receive the challenge of the new commandment to love one another. Come and contemplate the many temptations of a world that would entice us, like Judas, to betray the trust of a suffering God. Come to travel with Jesus to the way of the cross so that our Easter alleluias will take on new meaning. Let us worship together and reflect upon the life of Christ that we might remember what discipleship may cost and what it may reap. The story of this night comes to us from John's gospel in the uh, 13th chapter. Um, and um, I'm going to read it, not from the Bible per se, but um, this is called um, the Children of God Storybook Bible, and it's by Bishop Tutu, um, who's one of my favorite people. Um, I met him once a long time ago, so um, that's kind of a claim to fame for me. So, But he tells the story of how God is humble and Jesus becomes a servant. Jesus and his disciples gathered in Jerusalem. Their feet were dirty from walking the dusty roads, telling people about God's dream. The disciples started arguing over which one of them was the greatest. Jesus got up and tied a towel around his waist. He took a basin of water and began to wash the feet of his friends and let them dry on the towel. Jesus' friends were shocked. This is a servant's job, they shouted. But Jesus quietly continued washing their feet. When it was Peter's turn, he jumped up. Master, you will never wash my feet. Then you cannot be my disciple, said Jesus. Lord, cried Peter, wash my feet. 
my hands, my head, all of me. After Jesus had finished washing their feet, he took off the towel and sat down again. Do you understand what I have done, he said? You call me Lord and teacher, and I ha- but I have washed your feet like a servant. You must follow my example. The leader is the servant of all. You must be as servants to one another. No one is more important than anyone else. I want you to love one another the way I loved you. That's the great commandment, our mandate to love one another. If you're at home and have just had dinner, maybe have a little conversation with your kids um, or your friends or whoever's there right now um, about different kinds of meals, um, fast food meals um, that are on the run, holiday meals that you have with your family, uh, what your favorite meals are. Talk about Jesus's last meal with his disciples. Um, Back then, they had uh, tables that weren't um, high in the air with chairs like we did. They had a table that was very low to the ground on which they put their food, um, and um, they kind of reclined next to the tables. Um, So feet out. You can kind of try that for um, a few minutes if you want. Um, And they had regular food for their dinner. Um, It might have been some fish. Um, There could have been some fruit there, some dates or some figs or some apples, um, some grapes, perhaps, um, and and other things that um, they would have eaten in that region of the world um, in those days. Jesus spent his life teaching us the meaning of love. Through word and deed, Jesus showed us how to love God and love one another. He fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He invited the women and the children and the tax collectors and the sinners all to the table. He broke bread with the least and the lost and shared the cup of redemption with all. He crossed boundaries of race, nationality, ethnicity, gender, and class. He challenged religious authority and scoffed at pomposity, and self-absorbed grandeur. He called out the hypocrites. He admonished the scribes and the Pharisees for their hardened hearts. He brought a simple message. Love God, love yourself, and love one another. He uh, He brought that message to all of us still today. Only in the Gospel of John is the foot washing the focus of the Last Supper story. In the other three Gospels, uh, Mark, Matthew, and Luke, it is the sharing of the bread and wine as Jesus' own life that is at the center of the meal. This evening we celebrate both with our bodies and our hearts and minds, with food and drink, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, with water without which nothing and no one on this planet could survive, and with touch, without which we humans would wither from lack of love. In this day and age now, we humans are trying to figure out how to show love to others without so much of that physical touch. So tonight, as we eat and listen and move and touch and receive and offer and share, we also commit an act of memory and an act of hope. The ancient designation of this day, this night, is Monday. Like I said, a form of the word mandate. And what's a mandate? It's a command, a demand, an order, an administrative determination, a legal authority, something required. We're getting a lot of that these days. New requirements for just moving around. And, and being with others or not being with others, as the case may be. And these things are mandatory. They're not optional. There's no choice in the matter. So in a way, our Monday, Thursday takes on new meaning with all these mandates. But still, the mandate that we have today more than any other is to love one another. Let us pray. 
living and loving God, we lift our hearts to you in gratitude and joy for all the gifts you give to us. You made us in your own image and set in this world, set us in this world of contrasting beauty. In your great love, you delivered your people of old from slavery, and you have delivered us from the power of sin and death through the sacrificial love of Jesus. We praise and honor you, holy God. Heaven and earth are surely full of your glory. Blessed is he whose supper we share this night, and blessed are we, renewed by his life. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he washed his disciples' feet and gave them that new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. He took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You might have a piece of bread or a cracker. Doesn't matter exactly what it is, but share that. And then after supper, he took the cup and again gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Be present, Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit as you were in that upper room with your disciples so long ago when you shared our last supper with them. Make yourself known to us as we share among us this bread and this cup, which is your life in us. Amen. This is a night of love. And this is a table of love. At this table, Christ, who loves us, is with us. He's with us, and we are his. We belong to God. So we, his disciples, eat the bread and drink the juice and remember. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We eat and drink with thanksgiving, remembering all that Jesus has done for us. So in scripture, Jesus washed the disciples' feet and then shared the dinner. And I always reverse that um, at our church services, just as an act of cleanliness, we have communion first and then wash each other's feet. So I would suggest if you're at home um, with your family, you do the same thing there. Um, and, um, and, and uh, you know, pass the bread around, um, pass the crackers around. Um, however you choose to do it, it's okay. Um, I'm going to pass Nick a piece of cracker. Um, and uh, and I chose these small crackers for me just because when I'm chewing in front of a camera, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, and here's some juice. It doesn't have to be grape juice. It can be whatever you have handy. Um, like I said, if you don't have any juice handy, um, it can also be water. And then when you've done that, take a little bit of water. Doesn't have to be much. Like I said, it can just be a wet washcloth if you'd like. And, um, and wash each other's feet. So Nick, put your shoe over here. And, uh, and if you want, um, you can keep your shoes on um, if you're if you're like that, if you're a sissy and you don't want anybody to see your feet, so um, I actually even took my socks off ahead of time. So um, we can wash off my feet and we remember what Jesus did. They're not that dirty, Nick. No. It's okay. All right, good. Thank you. Tom's now coming back into the room. He was trying to avoid the foot washing. <laughs> now let us pray. We thank you, Lord for giving us the sacred meal, for giving us your presence and your life, 
for reminding us of your humility and everlasting grace. You knew your hour had come. You knew your betrayer. You knew your enemies. You knew that the straw vote would not be in your favor. But you loved until the end. Thank you for loving us, Lord, even unto death. Teach us to love like you love. Teach us to love each other. To love even our enemies like you loved us. You took the form of a servant, washing the feet of those whom you disciplined and discipled. You defined humility and servanthood in these actions. You are, are he who was surely sent from God. So thank you. Thank you for serving us. Thank you for teaching us to be servants and make and help us to make our make humility our constant companion and that so that we might seek no glory for ourselves. Remind us when we forget. On that solemn evening, you surrounded yourself with friends and enemies, with persons of faith and persons of ill will. Help us to be able to always emulate you when we are surrounded by our friends, and especially when we are not. You have established a new commandment. Help us to live it out in every moment of our lives, in every aspect of our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our communities, and throughout the world. On this holy day, we gather to remember again the miracle that you performed in our lives. You have brought us into this marvelous light at great cost to you, and you have given even each of us new life, eternal life. Amen. Hear these words that Jesus spoke to us on the night before he died. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Those words take on new meaning in our world today, yet they are no less powerful than they were that fateful night. If you are scared or worried, fearful or troubled, hold those words close. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. My friends, please join us tomorrow as we share in a Good Friday service. Be safe and be at peace. Amen.